Hi, welcome to the Pulse Shift News, the home of the Mavstar Observatory. Guys, you already know that the primary focus point of all what we do at the Mavstar Observatory is magnetic pole related, magnetosphere, magneto, uh, low solar output. And in this video, I was going to show you uh, me putting together uh, some more components of the cloud chamber and also building a couple more magnetometers, hopefully to get out into that region now of the um, magnetic uh, weak, weak spots on our planet, or more generally known as the uh, South Atlantic anomaly. Um, so hopefully in the next few weeks we'll have those magnetometers built. We're, we're waiting for a couple of chips and it's a bit of a um, dark area because we're not sure whether the suppliers are going to send us uh, like for like uh, magnetometers if that's the case. We're going to get the ones that we don't need and they're not going to work on our program. But uh, we're waiting for the first uh, delivery. Um, we've got somebody else over in the United States. Scott has ordered five, I believe. I've ordered one just as a precaution because I don't want to order another um, five of them and have five more magnetometers that we can't use. So I've ordered one and we're going to see if it's the, the right one. If it is, we're going to order another five, hopefully. Scott over there in the United States has managed to uh, track down some CJM49 chips magnetometers that we need and if that's the case we could end up with uh, 10 if we're really lucky or we could end up with 10 ones that we can't really do anything about or with. But it's really important guys um, what I have to share with you in this uh, upload more important than me soldering wires on the cloud generator and build showing you how I build these magnetometers and as you know I always like to get down to the problem the cause of the situation like for instance the biggest thing that is changing our climate right now is the fact that we're going through a magnetic reversal and at the same time going through a grand solar minimum with low solar output it's been going on now for 33 years. We've not seen a change in the cycle and we haven't seen solar cycle 25 really show itself as a real true cycle. So, you know, as things go on and further into the future, you know, it looks bleak. We are going to continue to see the magnetosphere weaken, that's for sure. Even if it's an excursion event and not a completed magnetic reversal, it won't make no difference to most of us because if it is an excursion, it's going to last for thousands of years, between 12 and 14,000 years. If it's a completed and, you know, complete reversal, it will last for many hundreds of thousands of years. So regardless of what situation we face, it's in for the long haul and most of us, um, you know, will die and it will be our future generations that have to pick up the pieces as a result of this uh, grand solar minimum and magnetic reversal that we face. But I always like to get to the nitty gritty of what we face and show you guys what is the main problems that we're facing right now. And there's quite a few things to talk about in this video. So before I do, I want to say big thanks to those few people that are supporting us and it's a small amount guys and already you know we're at the middle of the month and it's looking like we're not even going to make what we did last month and you know last month we didn't make what we did the month before so you know our funds are dwindling down and we just need more support in order to keep doing what we're doing now I know the value of uh, the observatory uh, to me and I know it's the same to a few of you guys it's the only source of data uh, on the internet and on YouTube that you can get that has been collected by a specific uh, observatory like ours and relayed to you guys as it is and we've come out a couple of times before NASA remember that so our performance is as good as any other out there but there just isn't any other websites like what we've got out there delivering the facts on this biggest anomaly that we face. So, you know, I want to say a big thank you to those people that support us. And we really need to start encouraging more people to come forward and support this observatory to keep it going. Because it's sad to see, you know, these these monthly amounts going lower and lower when they should be getting higher and higher. We're reaching more audience people and, and bigger audiences now we've almost 25,000 subscribers and 
you know it just seems uh, we're doing the opposite with regards to raising funds so I don't want to keep mentioning it guys but at the same time I don't want to see the funding dry up for our observatory so let's get into the facts then why we're looking at this energy cycle so let's get into it it's really important that you pay attention to these very simple key concepts because they're the foundation of how everything works in a human body and most biodiversity on this planet if you get the, uh, the simple concepts of this you'll understand all else what's going on and you know you'll start to see the implications we're going to start facing and trust me guys I'm going to go through a few of these things that we're already facing and how they're going to really start to affect all our lives and trust me it's already started the game has begun a long time ago and you know it's not going to get any better because there's no signs of equilibrium I've mentioned this before in other videos so most of our energy starts by coming through our atmosphere and the source of that energy is our Sun and basically if the Sun has a low output then it's going to affect things further down the chain and it's going to affect biodiversity across all ranges on this planet as a result of that so we're already starting to see um, you know how crop losses are you know uh, across the world failing and becoming more frequent and we start to change our eating habits as a result of that and I was watching another channel um, only today with regards to the fact of certain things um, like meat uh, people are not being able to afford meat so they're going to the next um, you know uh, alternative which is you know probably for more than one reason as well probably a healthier lifestyle they're changing meat for beans peas and you know other staples uh, but the thing is those things themselves now are starting to become a premium on the planet and rarer I'm not saying they're completely rare but in some places around the world you can't get them at certain points of the year um, what the question begs me now is you know if people went from meat to beans peas and things like that you know so other staples rice etc what they're going to go from there to the next that's the big question um, I'm going to slightly deviate here uh, I just want to say that this affects everything it doesn't uh, all, you know, always look like it's affecting other areas but I just want to give you a, a little glimpse as what's what's been going on over here in the UK um, you know because it, it affects everything guys I mean we've got more than one problem that we're facing first of all we've got this new uh, zero hour contract which has uh, turned up in the workforce now has been uh, in play for you know a few years but this has other impacts on other areas of you know the economy for instance if you've got a low paid job and it's zero hour contract how are you going to get a mortgage if you can't get a mortgage you can't get onto the property ladder the property market stagnates as a result of that and it's not been announced yet but it will be shortly in the UK and it's going to be the same throughout Europe and probably some of the bigger countries like the United States Canada and Australia as well as other places so you know the zero hour contract is going to destroy the property market price so we could be looking at a property market crash in the not too distant future so just bear that in mind if you're probably thinking about taking a mortgage then you might want to consider just waiting a little bit longer just to see how things play out um, <clears throat> other trends that we're noticing uh, now because we're a multicultural society here in the UK and we've had a lot of different nationalities now come from all over Europe and you know just a couple of things that I've heard people talking about um, you know it's not I'm, I'm in fact I'm not even going to mention the country where where this little bit of a problem is coming from but you know for years and years a lot of people have enjoyed as the pastime in this country fishing and obviously a lot of the fishing um, in fresh water comes from lakes and we've got plenty of these throughout the UK and one of the most common fish in the lakes that people fish for are carp and pike 
and you get others like roaches and things like that but the carp are disappearing in the lakes because of a specific nationality has come into this country recently over the last probably 20 30 years in larger numbers and they're starting to um catch the fish and take them away whereas you know it was it was common practice for us as a sport just to catch them and put them back in we never took the fish out of the lakes but the numbers of fish are now diminishing and you know as a result of that um these little fishing tackle shops are going bankrupt because people are just losing interest in catching the fish the competitions for fishing are becoming smaller and smaller and you know they're having to tech these people that own these lakes extra precautions now to monitor fishermen that you know to make sure that they don't remove the carp but carp on this nationality's um uh food list is a, a, a food source you know it's commonly at so you know the thing is these are the sort of things we start to notice um you know, as a result of added pressures being put on different parts of the economy. Um, another <coughs> nationality, which I won't mention, because we now have lots of them, but these are specific nationalities that have got specific trends that are, are widely talked about here in the UK. And you probably have them elsewhere, but, you know, there's more people these days going around the streets with shopping trolleys, loading it up from people's front gardens as they pass with scrap metal. And there's little micro um, economies that are forming and industries that are forming in this country we've never seen before. If I took an old washing machine out, I did do this actually, I put an old fridge and an old washing machine outside the house, I was going to load them into the car and take them down to the recycling department. A couple of hours later, I came out and the washing machine was gone. The fridge was still there, but the washing machine was gone. It was, it was like, you know, where where did it vanish from you know it just mysteriously went <clears throat> and remember i live in like a rural village you know there's not many people here and i didn't hear a car pull up i didn't hear a van pull up or anything i just noticed that this thing had just miraculously disappeared and some of the neighbors have had similar things happen to them as well like my neighbor had this plastic bird stand in his garden that looked like brass or, or heavy metal and it was taken, obviously. And then he told me it was plastic. I said, well, it did to look, look to me like it was, you know, a cast iron bird stand. But, you know, this is the sort of thing that we're starting to see happen. Another thing I think is a bit dangerous is the drain covers are going missing. But they weigh a lot in steel. But the problem is when you remove a drain cover from the road and a cyclist comes along, you know, he's going to have a nasty accident. And, you know, I see them replacing the drain covers and then they go missing again. So this little micro teams of people, you know, going about uh, taking these things. Another thing that's on the increase is power cable uh, theft. Because the power cables, I know they've changed the composite of the metal and the material now that run through the open countryside um, from copper to another material. Them, them things are starting to get stolen. The problem is, is that we've passed peak on a lot of things, not just peak oil, peak energy. We have definitely passed recently peak food production and all these things are becoming peak uh, related problems. When you pass peak, you then uh, go into the red. It's like your rev counter on your car. It's in the red and there's, you know, you can't keep it in the red for very long because the engine ain't going to just um, take it. The, the added pressure so we're going to start to see things falling apart and you know i want to show you another clip here before we move on to something else i just want to clear up a few of the you know key fundamental um problems and where they stem from so as you know before i leave this you know without the sun energy coming into the system you know everything else starts to uh, reduce in production so you know, we're looking at vegetation, animal uh, cycles, human cycles. Every, every biodiversity across the range will have an effect if low energy comes in. During times of high energy, you know, things will thrive a lot more. If you add to that problem climate change, you know, flash floods, devastating crops, you know, it all just adds to the problem. And, you know, at the end of the day, we are going to start to see these problems become wider 
uh, around the world. So you know, it's it's not, the purpose of this video is to say, guys, open your eyes now. You know, because you are in the times where there are massive changes that are affecting you know everything about our daily lives. And and you know, really, you know, I'm going to say this now. I'm also going to say it at the end of this video. You know, we need to adapt to these changes. Um, you know, we need to find ways of becoming more sustainable and taking care of our own needs personally because we can no longer rely on farms and everything else to do it for us. It's past its peak and we need to start to act. That's the main thing because, you know, we've got another five to seven years before, probably before we start seeing a magnetic reversal and that's going to have its uh, wider implications on everything else. So, you know, let's get on with the next clip otherwise I'm just going to keep talking about this. So this is a real simple diagram of how a simple plant works, a flare in this incident. Uh, we've got photosynthesis taking place. Now that wouldn't take place uh, if there was no sunlight. So, you know, we know that there are two components to plants, what takes place above the ground and what takes place beneath the ground. And it's a combination of the two that help the plant or flower in this case thrive. But the big problem I want to talk about here is something I recently give a talk to on an agricultural company uh, that produces, you know, chemicals. I mean, they are only fully too aware of the importance of putting the nutrients into the ground. And with a lot of agricultural uh, processes now is that they don't rotate crops so that they force the land to produce crops the next year and then the year after and the year after. And the only way they can do that without letting the land rest up is to add those nutrients to the ground. And, you know, I've mentioned this a few times. I've heard farmers now being extremely concerned about the actual levels of nutrients within the soil because if you don't have healthy soil you ain't going to get nothing else out the plants won't thrive uh, you know regardless of how much photosynthesis and sunlight and energy from the sun you're going to get if what's not is in the ground good enough to produce that crop it won't uh, it won't be a, you know a good crop so we need a combination of two things and already we've got um, you know a low solar output so the, the photosynthesis rate goes down and we've also got poor soils now in most of this agricultural land which is going offline so as a result you know the food production is going to go down regardless of it, if it gets a flash flood or food production is going to go up in price because they're having to add more nutrients to the soil to get the soil in a shape where it can form whatever crops that that's desired at the end of it. So we're facing a lot of problems and it comes down to us guys at the end of the day. You know some of the people that I really feel most sorry for are the farmers because these guys are getting up at three o'clock in the morning and even earlier than that to take care of their business and they're coming home probably at nine o'clock on the evening, some evenings when the weather's, you know, at its peak because they need to get out there and, you know, collect things like what we're looking at here, soilage uh, for the cattle. Now, it's even becoming a problem for these farmers to grow just grass to feed the cattle. You see how it has a knock-on effect all the way across the lines, guys. If the soil's not even got like things like potash and nitrogen in the soil, it won't even grow just simply grass. So, you know, the pressure's really on. And, you know, their equipment... Uh, doesn't stay new and usable forever you know there's always maintenance costs there's always needs you know and you know what do they do in these uncertain times do they take loans out because we know this is what's happening they take a loan out hoping that the season's going to be you know better for them they have another failed season the money then isn't there for them to make the payments on the loans for the equipment that they've made it's probably been secured on the lands themselves the land gets snatched back by the bank, it goes up for sale, you know, it's probably about three years before the land's either used again or a suitable person, uh, as, you know, managing the land. And, you know, this is just another way in which, you know, arable land is going offline because of, you know, the, the system that we're in. It's failing everywhere. I just want to say one other thing because I was talking to someone the other day with regards to, you know, um, when... When uh, depression starts to creep into, you know, uh, cultures, 
and countries and things and not just cities as this city's got a big problem that I'm in but it's no different from any other city in the UK uh, with alcohol and drug addiction and, and this is one of the things that booms during these times of depression and you know the media will keep well away from these subjects because what they want to do is beat the drum you know everything's fine guys uh, you know there are plenty of jobs there's money out there. You can take it. You know, it's easily, readily available. There's plenty of food. Look, don't worry about the electricity company supplying the needs. It's all taken care of, and they beat that drum. But the reality is, on the ground, quite different. And if you just look at the increased rates in alcohol and drug use during these times, you'll know that they those are going through the roof. Just to give you an example, the person that I was talking about that. Um, like you know, deals with problems with people uh, that have they're not they're not like a community worker. They're almost a social service uh, social services person. Uh, she told me during a little conversation we had in the week that that one out of every three people right now in this city that I live in, uh, not the village, but the whole city. Um, I think, well, the number she gave me was 100,000 out of 300,000 that actually live in the city have got an alcohol or a drug related problem and it's on the increase and her concerns were the governments weren't doing enough uh, to notify people of it and it's clear to me that they want to keep things like this quiet because in times of war alcohol consumption increases if you look at back at any war recently in these countries, you'll find that you know when people start to you know be deprived of a lot of things, they start to get depressed and they they reach for a bottle or you know in some cases drugs and things like that. So these things boom, and this doesn't help in any way at all uh, improve matters. It just temporarily blocks them out, and that's what a lot of people are doing right now. And these numbers are in, on the increase, and it just, you know, is just another facet on this uh, brilliant cut diamond that we're looking at. You know, and uh, all these problems uh, come together, create an even bigger problem. And the, it's the big problems that people are not aware of. So, you know, when you hear me talk about these things, <coughs> First of all, I try and take you right back to where the problems stem. So with regards to, you know, uh, crop outputs, right, we've got more than one facet and that's why it's hard to get your head around it. So first of all, we've got problems with the deficiencies of nutrients in the soils. Then we have problems above the soil with the uh, solar radiation being low. And then we have other problems with the magnetic poles reversing on this planet as another uh, the problem there is is that you know the magnetosphere weakens we get more cosmic radiation inbound changes the jet streams which affects you know arable lands good cropping lands in the fact that they could lose the crops completely through drought or through major floods and that's what we're seeing now in a lot of parts of the world major floods as a result of more uh, cloud vapor, you know, condensing over these lands and flooding them out. You know, what I like to do here, guys, is get to the nitty gritty of what's caused the problem. So we've got a lot of problems, and they're in turn having knock on problems through, you know, uh, job <coughs> output. You know, another one is another major one is, you know, we keep increasing our technology, and as a result of that, we when we do that, we decrease the job demand. You know, there's been uh, some big things neglected and changes that should have been taken place years and years ago haven't. And now as a result of that, we're looking at a major, major disaster uh, for all these problems coming together at a specific point. And I think that this could be the reason, you know, that you know our governments have took some uh, form of continuity program uh, we talk about the, you know the deep underground bases that have been built and stockpiled up. Well, this could be you know the fact that they have seen all these things gradually you know building up, and they've probably got a, a mark in time in the future saying you know at this point it will have reached critical levels, and societies in you know most of the Western worlds will begin to collapse. We've got you know guys when I talk about the gauntlet. 
and all the obstacles on that gauntlet we are rapidly approaching a collision course with one of the obstacles as a result we will cascade into lots of others it's just a matter of time you know we've got a grand solar minimum we've got a, a, a big changes with relationship to the earth's magnetic poles reversing we've overcropped the, the the fields where we grow our food you know the nutrients isn't in the soil and it isn't certainly coming from the top of the soil in forms of energy from the sun uh, technology's taken away their jobs it's forced now people to take jobs where there's no contracts and minimum wage so you know the, the our happiest periods of time on this planet have come and gone we've passed the peak on most of these scales that we talk about and things are just going to start getting worse so you know we, we need to do we need to start coming together uh, in in whatever communities we've got either on YouTube we need to start informing people uh, that we care about and we love and we need to start taking care of ourselves because we can no longer depend on the system that is in place to provide for us we need now to start filling those gaps ourselves and we need to start doing that yesterday guys that's the big message really today and that's why I didn't want to just do a video of showing uh, you guys me building another magnetometer because you know I can do that anyhow and just tell you that we've sent it out you know I don't need to show you me building a cloud generator I'll just show you the cloud generator working when it's completed and we're just waiting for a few more components for that and that will come online in the next month or two for sure I mean, that's a promise I will bring it online hopefully by the end of next month meantime guys we need to keep some funding coming in for this observatory because it is one of the key factors that is like you know the the low mineral content in the ground you know the, the topic that we talk about is one of the key factors here it's one of the biggest anomalies anomalies that's taking place and you know without the information on that uh, we're not going to be um, you know in the know to know where to go next you know we need to keep an, an eye on this really I really believe that and you know keeping it funded the observatory is, is paramount at the moment you know guys big thanks to everyone uh, that have supported it the links are down there now guys think about it think about seriously supporting our channel and the observatory and what we're doing you know we are providing a service here and I just want to keep that service going and I know a lot of you guys have already invested you know regular support into this and we don't want to see it go that's the main thing we need to change our recent trend of two months around it needs to start improving from this point on so guys the links down there you can support us on Patreon or PayPal um, but wherever it happens you know try and put a bit of support in that's the main thing and we'll keep you know everybody informed of you know the big changes that are taking place at least from our point of view uh, okay i'll say what i usually do guys it's the beginning of the week have a great week and you know in two days time we're whipping the sd out of the uh, trimag system we'll have a look at what's going on with the magnetic poles because over the last few months as you know things are changing so i'll say what i usually do bye for now